Here we are then. I am in a house that's exact opposite to the one that we visited last week. So I say, I suppose, I guess my point is, I think of it as exactly the opposite. You should probably think of it as exactly the opposite. But in reality, if I talk about it through the numbers, um, most people will struggle to see the difference. But I mean, I am in the cheapest house that we would normally buy to keep. Uh, and last week I was in pretty much the most expensive house that we would buy to keep. And this one is, I'll, we'll cover, I'll give you a guided tour in a minute and also we'll, we'll go through the numbers in full but fully. Um, but it's a £50,000 house. I'm sat in a house that costs £50,000. And last week I was in a house that cost £150,000. In actual fact, this one's a little bit less than one hundred fifty. Uh, and last week's was a little bit more, which is the, one of the reasons we went to them was it was the absolute extremes. Um, uh, however, you know, that is three times the, the price. Um, but also, most people, I think, I know, you know, speaking and, and listening to other property investors, struggle to sort of see the, the, the difference between the, you know, most people go to the 150 grand house and think it's very, very similar to this house. Um, and there are some subtle differences. There are some, there are some things that have just, I've got no explanation at all, that, that they shouldn't be different. That's one of the reasons why we particularly like this kind of house. Let's go on a little bit of a tour. I'm obviously in the bathroom right now. I think, well, that's it, look. <laughs> let, me, let me turn the camera around. There we go, look, so uh, it is, it, this house is undeniably, it's, it's smaller than the, uh, the, the, the last house that we looked at. The last property, the most expensive house, was a three bed, proper family home. This is a two bed, and even the bedroom, I mean, that, that is a, it's not a double bedroom at all, it's a single, and, it's a terraced house. I love these. I love these houses. Um, and we've renovated it in our usual way. It's, that, is a, that is a double bedroom. I'm now going to go down the stairs, which are incredibly steep. You know, people sometimes ask us, actually, you know, what about building regs on the stairs like that? Absolutely. You would not be allowed to build that anymore. But as it's in, um, it's in. You know, we've got a, got a handrail there. I've always got a handrail on them. So, it is existing, that is, that is the house you have got. One front room, small, and it's straight in off the street into that uh, front room. And then we do put a nice sort of kitchen in. And I think there's a little space there for you know, a table as well. I will, let's have, let's have me back. So I said there'd be a tour, but that was it. You know, it's a, it's a small house. So obviously the difference there is it's it's a two bed terraced house versus a three bed semi that was uh, the, the house we went to before. The numbers, this house, we bought it for £36,750. And no, you didn't hear me wrong. That is £36,750. It is amongst the cheapest houses we've uh, bought for a long time, ever. It's, it's amongst the cheapest houses we've ever bought. Um, We've spent £14,000 on this house, so it did need a fair bit of work. It was in reasonably bad order, although the structure it was, was fine, you know. The structure was fine, um, the roof had just recently been redone, um, but we had to do some, some you know, reasonably major works. So the total cost was £50,750, and it's the end value that um, it's quite striking. It, so the end value of this property is £60,000, so it's still going to be a cheap house. Um, we actually put it down as um, 60 to 70,000 pounds, and I'll, I'll come on to that as well. Now, I believe that right now in this market, we will get 60,000 pounds as a valuation. That has its own problems because it's below minimum uh, values for several lenders, uh, it's also below minimum loan values for several lenders. Uh, but I actually quite like that and um, I want that to continue for a little bit longer and I'll tell you a little bit about why in a minute. It, it causes a challenge for sure, but it's also the reason we could buy this house for sort of 36. I think right nowadays we'd be buying this house, well, I, know, I say nowadays, I know it for a fact and I don't, it's not a thing, three or four doors down the, down the road, we've just bought a house for 48,000 pounds. It was in pretty much the same order. So um, it's not that time's running out, but we're buying in an area where the values, we are becoming the market maker and the, the values are rising. So the longer we can keep it under that threshold, the more opportunity there is for honestly for us to buy um, uh, those houses. We recently had a mortgage valuation come back and 
we should have expected it. Um, yeah, we can, we can perhaps challenge it, but of the three comparables that were there, that were low, that were hold, it was a bad valuation, it was holding our valuation down, all three of them were houses that we'd bought for under 50,000 pounds. So when we're saying this house is worth 70,000 pounds, it's very hard for a surveyor to sign off on that when we have bought in this area um, 30, 40 houses, all in this area, all for under £50,000. We've spent between ten and £20,000 on every single one of them, um, but we are the market maker and we do need a little bit of time to allow owner-occupiers to perhaps sell a house for £70,000, £75,000. The thing that keeps me um, going in this area, first, first of all, you should not be able to buy a house for £50,000. You just shouldn't. It's impossible. Um, to build this house from scratch will cost £125,000. Um, that's how much it's insured for. Yeah, the insurance value is £125,000. A developer would build it for about £100,000. Obviously, there'd be a profit in there. Um, they, they, may, they may just get it down to sort of 85, 90, depending on the exact spec, but the, you know, around those kind of numbers. So you shouldn't be able to buy it for £50,000. That's what I'm saying. We have never bought a house for £50,000 that did not double in five years. And I believe it's because of that. You, they shouldn't be £50,000. But it does have its, its challenges. The valuations and getting people to believe it being the major one at this time. But I like it because it it's, um, means that we've got a little bit longer in this area to try and buy the, uh, the rest of them. Just looking down here, so I've got the rental figure. So this house is rented. We've got, actually... We, I own next door as well. This is actually my house. It's not just a client house. It's my house. And I own next door as well. Um, bought for the same price. And uh, they're both rented now. We rented both of them for £500. Actually £495. Um, so, yeah, the mortgage on that will be... Uh, we're going to get a loan of £45,000. Now, there's the tricky bit. Are we going to get a loan of £45,000? You can see that some of the lenders have got minimum values of... Um, uh, so minimum loan amounts are 50 grand. There are one or two will go down to 45, but yeah, you know, if we can get it just a little bit over, there's a couple of uh, lenders out there that'll do free valuations just to try, and we'll try those. Um, but you can see it's tricky. It's, it is, there's no two ways about it. It's a tricky um, sort of area. It's just on the cusp. I like that. That's why we combine them for 50 grand. If it was easy, if I had a bolted on um, end val of 80 grand and you know, I bought it for, you know, like, like the last one we saw, you know, it was higher value, Higher, higher purchase, higher value, everything about it was higher. In many ways, it's easier because, you know, I can always get a survey out there to agree that it's worth £160,000. If I get a down value to £155,000, let us say, no big deal, hey? Um, whereas this one, it's, it's, it's tricky, but yeah, that's why we managed to buy it for the, the money we did. Anyway, if we do get a loan of forty five grand, uh, I'll work out that the mortgage is going to be... It's going to be about 100 and, 110, 120 quid, isn't it? Something like that. So you can see this has got excellent yield on it. So the, the time that I'm waiting for a, a survey to come back and come back good and me to pull my money back out of this, which I'm, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that we'll, we'll manage to do, I'm making a great yield. And I know, I just know that in three to four years time, as soon as it pops up over that level, I can see houses around here all the time going for sort of um, 50s, 60,000 pounds. It won't be long before there's a nice comparable for a owner occupier comparable uh, higher than that. And then uh, we'll get it up to the, the 80, 90 and 100,000 pounds because it's happened in all the other areas as well. I think the point here was taken with last week's video. Where do we buy? What kind of houses do we buy? And I've shown you either end of the scale. And to me, they are polar opposites apart. But they're not that far apart, are they? Yeah. This is the smallest house we'd ever buy. The cheapest house we'd ever buy. And last week's one was pretty much the biggest and the most expensive. One's 50 grand, one's 150 grand. You know, that is a big difference, you know. You know, you think of a, a 500,000 pound house and a 1.5 million pound house. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a big difference, I know that. Um, Rent-wise, you know, the rent didn't go up much more for the uh, the much bigger one. Yeah, we're talking sort of, I can't remember what it was, uh, 900 quid or something, 900 quid. So, you know, buying the cheaper stuff has definitely got um, a payoff in terms of the monthly yield. Um, I believe that this house is going to rock it up in value, so that's that's good. But then again, the the end value issue is maybe not quite as uh, as bolted on. So, um, if we could categorise the areas as area one is um, the Bronx, and area ten is Manhattan. That's a classic kind of uh, way to, to describe properties, isn't it? 
then we would never buy the one. <clears throat> really importantly, this is not a rough area. I've parked my car outside, I'm quite happy. And um, yeah, it's fine. I, I, I wouldn't aspire to live in here, but I wouldn't be scared of living here. And uh, I wouldn't be, if, if in the old days I had to collect the rent in cash, we wouldn't be worried about doing that. We don't collect <laughs> rent in cash anymore. Um, so you don't buy a one. Um, you try not to buy a two, because the two is next door to a one. Um, and I don't believe this is quite a two. It might just be, it being the smaller, cheaper, and it might just, just be. But you do buy a three and you do buy a four. You cannot buy in a five. Last week's one that I showed you, the nicer house, that was almost in a five. So absolutely the polar end, ends of what we do. The yield just disappears after, after area five. Six, seven, eight, nine and 10, absolutely no chance that you can buy a house in those areas to keep. So hopefully it's been useful running through the numbers, seeing both houses and working out the kind of things that you need to be looking for.